All right, here we are back again. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to turn your eight measure loop into uh, something that feels a lot more like a full song. Uh, your song should have a sense of development to it, meaning um, that just like in storytelling, just like in fiction, uh, we should see rising action, or rather hear rising action, uh, hear the song come to a climax, and then have falling action as a re and a resolution. Um, and so it's, it's actually decently simple to start to build a song uh, that flows in that way. Now, um, I will not uh, be going through uh, any of the more complex uh, arrangement ideas um, that you can create for a song or use for a song, uh, such as making a bridge or uh, making an outro or anything like that. Our song is just going to build layer by layer, um, maybe starting with the beat and then bringing the bass line in and then one of the tracks of chords and then the other track of chords. And then, um, as you've noticed, I've, I've actually added three more layers of loops down here at the bottom uh, that were not there when the last video ended. Uh, I've got two more types of hi-hats, this one here and this one here. And then I've actually got another snare that I add that plays along with the one that we played ourselves and just gives it a little bit more uh, thickness to it, a little bit more oomph. So um, I've got my eight measure uh, loop here and all I really need to do to start arranging this thing is to begin grabbing the clips not on the ends, not touching the buttons, but just grabbing the main colored part of the clip and pulling them all away from the beginning. I also need to click on this purple bar up here to turn the loop off so that the song will continue to play past those eight measures. Once it's turned off, it's gray, and we know that that's what's going to happen. All right, um, so let's, yeah, let's actually start with something like this going. We're going to have just the hi-hats come in, then the beat, um, then bring the bass in, then the chords. Okay, so I need the bass to exist for a full time around before the chords come in at all. Now, um, as you notice, these don't all extend far enough, right? So you're gonna get things dropping away um, when they're supposed to keep playing. So of course, the next step is just to grab uh, the top right corner, the looping corner, or looping icon, and drag everything out. Um, and I might, I might turn some of these off later. In fact, I know I will turn some of these off later. Uh, but right, for right now, we're not going to make those decisions yet. We're just going to drag all these out. All right, let's see what start what what happens here. So what we should hear already is some rising action. First, we're going to hear the hi hats, and then the beat's going to come in after four measures. And then the bass line comes in after another four measures. And that plays out for a full eight. And then the chords. So one thing I'm noticing here, yep, there it is. What I've noticed is uh, when I first cut uh, away the junk on my beat um, that I played myself, uh, there's actually a tiny bit sticking uh, out past where the loop should be, which is right at the end of the eighth measure. So I need to split this again and try again to just cut and loop this guy we should be good now because I was hearing this go off time. Uh, the other two things I've noticed are that um, I think I want my snare to come in, my second snare to come in when the melody comes in. So we not only have one element coming in this time, but two at once. And that'll kind of give it um, a more exciting quality where all of a sudden the song is really starting to change a bit. Um, the other thing I want to do is turn up the tempo a bit. The song um, is at a nice tempo, but it's a bit slow right now. And I'd like to try 110. 
Remember to hit adjust, the purple adjust button. I'm clicking that. It does some calculating and then there we go. So let's see what this is like now. So uh, we've got our rising action into our climax where all the different layers of the song are playing together. And now it's time to start taking elements away. Um, I would say what I would like to try doing first, because I'm going to make this song break down kind of quickly. Now it's up to you how long you have all these um, different elements play out, right? But what I'm going to do is take away all the different parts of the beats. I'm gonna leave all the three parts of the melody to play on their own. But I'm gonna take away the whole beat except for, I'm gonna take away the whole beat except for just the kick and snare. Hmm, nah, I don't really like that. Let's try keeping this snare layer in. thinking about what would happen if this was the end. Yeah, it's pretty nice. All right, uh, anyways, how to arrange a song. Remember, just turn the loop off, start dragging your clips around uh, to build up the song layer by layer. Um, and then of course loop those clips so that they continue to play. I was going to make a whole final video about uh, mixing and all that mixing is is the process of turning different tracks up and down with the volume knobs, panning tracks using the panning knob here, and what panning is is it um, moves things either to the left speaker or the left ear in your headphones or the right ear um, depending on where you pan it and doing things like changing how much treble or how much bass is in a, is in a track to make them um, either be a little bit more mellow in the mix or stand out more. And then finally, I wanted to show you guys that you can add all sorts of different effects here that you can play around with. Uh, the room effect or the delay effect can, can help to make things sound like they're farther away. The compressor effect can help to make things sound more aggressive, so it can say distortion or overdrive if you're trying to get sort of a dirty, crunchy tone. Um, same with fuzz. And uh, chorus, uh, phaser, and flanger um, can, can help to make things sound just a little bit more uh, ethereal, for lack of a better term, a little bit more spacey or, or shiny sounding, shimmery sounding. Uh, there, there are all sorts of effects in here that you can use to, to create all sorts of different sounds. I'm not going to show any of them to you because it would take quite a while, but it's, it's kind of up to you to play around with them and check them out. The last thing I wanted to point out to you are these fade dots. Uh, every track, every clip has these white dots on the upper corners of, those, uh, of them. Those white dots can be used to fade in and fade out those clips, like so. And what a fade is, is... Uh, you know, a fade in is where the clip slowly turns up um, so you can hear more and more of it while you're listening. So here's this bass, for instance. Listen to, to how it turns up. That's a fade in. Here's a fade out. 
it slowly gets turned down, right? Fade-ins and fade-outs. Those are a nice uh, finishing touch that you can add to your song. Um, all right. Uh, get to work. Thanks.